Hey guys, thought to just do a bit of an intro for this uh, DVD. No second to last day. Just left the Kisarava. So anyway, this DVD is really a collection of photos and video of uh, our Kokoda trek, our experience with Kokoda Spirit. First, I'd really like to thank um, all the porters, particularly the kitchen porters, just done a fantastic job getting us through it. I'd like to thank Max, gave us an awesome series of stories about what's happened here in the, during the war, the Kokoda and the Papuan campaigns, and to follow in the footsteps of our Australian heroes after pretty much 68, to 68 years to the day. It was an absolute honour. Those guys did it so hard. Uh, it makes me really proud to be an Aussie. First on 100 Ks, but it's tough. Yet it's absolutely fantastic. And it's not for the faint-hearted. If you decide to get in and do it, then you just got to commit. Training, I recommend. Bush training, hill training. It's uh, yeah, it's full on. But the landscapes, the diversity and the change has just been magnificent. Beautiful forests and high top ridges of grassy plains and the villages have been amazing. The people have just been so friendly. The kids are fantastic. If you take a photo of the kids, got to show them. A crew of 18 of us, a really diverse group of men and women, old and young. So, uh, yeah, it's just been magical. So. Sit back, enjoy this uh, this DVD. I hope that I've been able to bring you a sense of uh, my Kokoda trek, anyway, and uh, what we've got to experience. Have a good one. The song name called It's not an easy road in this Koda, guys. But make sure. It's not an easy road. We are traveling to Koda. This is our base camp tonight, right there. And that actually feels like about 70 hours, I must admit. So uh, I don't know how those diggers managed to get through. Um, been good, we had a bit of a feed. And yep, staying here tonight, just having a bit of a wash and uh, 
up at five tomorrow morning and uh, we head off for another seven or eight hours tomorrow so it's just pretty hard yakka. So uh, I've got a fantastic guide then. We'll see some shots of him later. And uh, yeah, you see, we'll have a little bit of a rest. Talk to you later. Bye. Here we are the first morning of the camp, heading off, got about a six or seven hour hike up the top of that hill there. You see we're packing up. An interesting night of sleep, sort of. The bugs were screaming and uh, it was all go, but uh, I think I slept a few times and I woke up a few times and I don't know. So, big day today. Got recommended the Gators. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it all pans out. Okay, let's go. Here we are, we're one of our many river crossings. I'm just praying I don't drop my camera. So beautiful out here. There you go. It's day two of the trek. Getting a blister now. We've got a couple of days of river crossings. Glad it's not wet season. Um, yeah, it's just been fantastic so far though. Um, yeah, enjoy the view. Here we are, it's a little village. Just had a beautiful swim. Water's cool but refreshing. About to have a bite to eat. And uh, then I think we've got some more creek crossings after this. But, uh, a little walk up a hill. Yeah, that's it, here. Yeah. A little walk up a hill. So we've got to make sure we've got plenty of water and uh, some good food in us. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, that's for sure. Don't know how these diggers got through here.
Kick member. Well, that's so, it looks pretty easy. Yeah. It's your hard work. <laughs> hey, mate, video's on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Ben, my porter. He's helping me. Yeah. He's a man. Who's Ben? Yeah. yeah. Benny. Oh, uh, yeah. She's, uh, plus it's hot too, eh? Lucky it's not raining. Yeah. Hey. Morning. Morning. It's on. When you're trekking, you don't talk in K's, you're talking hours. Today's looking like an eight hour day. We'll uh, see how we go. Bye. Uh, roll it, Yeah? Roll it. Roll it? Yeah. Roll it. Ridge line here is Hirabaya Ridge. A uh, bit of a nasty battlefield up there. Uh, 56 Australians uh, lost their lives up in that battlefield there, unknown, probably died of wounds after that. The diggers who were up there are obviously pretty much knackered, uh, most have been fighting from, right from um, uh, Isarava battlefield um, three weeks prior, or actually a month prior, back to that point there. So they were dug in, fighting with trawl, then they put a line in, so we'll actually see their trenches while we go up there tomorrow. The Japanese had their mountain guns further up on another ridge line and they were pounding their shells into the Australian positions. That actually set their charges to go off in the treetops. So as soon as a shell would hit the treetops, it was a shower down. Hey guys, how you going? It's, uh, it's day two and we've made it to camp finally. And probably within um, 10 minutes of the rain starting to come down. So you can hear a light shower at the moment. So it's been sort of uh, a bit heavy, a bit... Uh, bit light but it's been fairly consistent and yet yeah, I've got leaks. <laughs> oh well it's all part of the fun. So I've set up here, nothing's going to dry that's for sure. Have a quick scan. The rubbish, lollies, sleeping bag, socks, food for later. Let me stick our head out here. What do we got? Tent city. So, yeah, I assume that um, the um, hours will be the same tomorrow morning. Um, I've got some boys parked right next to me tonight, and I'm sure they'll be chatting away <laughs> until all hours. So, um, that was a bit of a hard climb getting up there, I must admit, and um, I'm really glad the rain held off because um, it would make it a really slippery slide. Um, so, we've got, I think I've got another five days of this, or six days to go. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's definitely an experience, it's fantastic, but at the same time it's pretty hard. So until then, um, see how you go. Okay, bye. Smells very natural. <laughs> here you go guys. <clears throat> Looks like we've got a, a 10 hour climb today. And uh, that's the first peak we've got to get to. So, uh, yeah, things are a little bit tender, but uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. Just take it slow, they reckon. But, yeah, this is uh, the sunrise here. Yeah, it's looking fantastic. All right, let's see how we go. See you later. Here we are, doing our big climb. And the rain started first time.
Ready, here we go. Hi. It's pretty steep. Pretty relentless. Just keeps going and going. Four hours today, just for this little section. Ten hours total today. You rip them by a digger um, when they're going through this part in October 42. Uh, but this one is called um, Jungle Patrol and it's uh, written by Corporal Peter Coverdale. It's a sunlight stream through the forest aisles that tangle the lush green hills. Where the struggling vines turn the trees in confusion we know so well. Tense to the impact of a shot from a hidden sniper's lair. Ready for the deadly booby trap to make the innocent unaware. Scanning the tops of nearby trees, ready to clear the track. And reply with chattering Owen gun to the sniping rifle crack. The soft deep mould, the clinging mud, the stench of rotting leaves, the reek of dress, death of silent thorns. The foe behind them we leave, unburied there beside the track, their conquering days are over. They'll never know their land of fairy trees. A sudden roar, the lone thick jack holds a grenade against his chest, thinking he'll take us with him too to the death of a warrior's neck. No wonder we're callous, hard at heart, no pity for the wounded jack. Many a brave Australian life. Here by Ridge. That was a hell of a climb, but I think that's the little one compared to the one we've got going later. Full on mud. Full on hill. So here we are. This is a uh, major defence ridge, Australians. And I guess we'll be looking at some uh, Japanese dugouts and some Aussie dugouts too. So we've also got over here. Yeah, it could be your, um, I, broke my I need to take photos of people climbing up it because it just doesn't look the same when you just take no, a photo of it. What's a lens error? There's Andrew, died 2006, 35 climbing, doing the Kokoda track. So, rest in peace, buddy. Race on their swift and turbulent way down the chasm deep they flow. Slowly the jungle paths flow down as the evening hours drag on, when an open up to my grass, a tired eyes slip the fog. Here we are, still raining, doing a bit of a down trek at the moment. It's come up a pretty steep ridge and it was hard work for another hour to go before lunch. This is uh, day three. And uh, yeah, the uh, thigh muscles are really feeling it. But onward we go. Chow down for dinner time. Check it out. Mm. About 20 minutes out, I was getting starving. I thought, my God. Mm. At that last break before here, mm. I was sitting there going, mmm. <laughs> pretty hungry and like an hour to lunch, I've got to get back and do this now. Nice. <laughs> Roof. It's down there. Good place for a picnic, isn't it? Everyone's uh, relaxed. We've got two hours to go on day three. It's absolutely beautiful. Just spectacular. Well worth it. What more can I say? Take it into yourself. Is it just all downhill from there? Yeah. Oh, really? Not a big one. You know, every time you go say it's not big. It's big. It's big, Alan. It's big. <laughs> to you, it's... To me, it's huge. I'm going to kill me now. Oh.
walking through the swamp at the moment. Swamp section, still day three. We're at um, Five Creek, I think it's called, campsite, and um, we're about to take the wall. This is the uh, the harvest day, it's day four. This is all preparing, last water stop for uh, two, and, two and a bit hours. Kind of, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of huffing and puffing and going slow, but um, we're all getting there slowly. Hopefully the ranger stays away. One minute until the wall. So here we go. Well, we uh, made it to the top of the wall. First platoon looks like they're heading off now. Maybe you have a bit of a spit of the book out. I have to say the uh, the wall was pretty intense, and uh, the key I found is just tiny little steps and go as slow as you can. So I think that's uh, the big one. A couple more we've got to. Uh, I think we're Something else, some other big girl today too, but you just sit down. All right. All right, we'll keep going. Here we go, check this out. <laughs> Look 
One of many bridge crossings. It's called Brigade Hill. It goes on forever and ever, and it's hard. Check this out. Long, slow climb. Okay, it's really hot up here, people. So we um, we won't be long, but it's a um, fairly profound memorial spot. We're actually uh, assembling ourselves on at the moment. We go back to the the days between the fourth and sixth of September, 1942. A battle raging on down below us, down there, the Battle of Mission Ridge where the um, Japanese were streaming upon the Australian position. You can imagine just the battalion alone using up all their ammunition and their reserve ammunition as well. So basically firing within about four to five metres of each other. That's how close the combat was. We outnumbered at least six to one in ratio. But uh, during the night, while the battles were still raging, the Japanese managed to sneak behind the Australian position and come up behind us knoll, right behind where we're standing and came up through there. Similar to what it looks like down here. They brought up their heavy Duca machine gun and a couple of light machine guns as well and of course a, a rifle company. So they were very well entrenched in here and they entrenched themselves a bit further along the track also. When we came in through the, um, the fence area there, just beyond that in the heavy vegetation was where the headquarters company was. That's where our Lieutenant Colonel Potts was and his headquarters company. And a bit further down the track, the, um, some of the back parts of the 2nd and 16th were um, dug in that area as well. But they weren't really expecting the Japanese to come through, but alas they did. So if we can imagine, Three battalions being cut off from their headquarters, their extra supplies, any messages, you know, the carrier cords coming through for the wounded, uh, and what to do next. And we've got three individual battalions, not knowing what each group is doing, it be a very hazardous situation. So the Japanese managed to forge their way through. Australia tried to break through from this side with headquarters company, break through from this side with a massive loss of life. Between the combined battles of um, Brigade Hill and um, Mission Ridge, 101 Australians died actually in the, the conflict there. And up on the knoll, just where we're standing and behind where we are, there were um, 76 crosses and triggers buried in a spot. Okay. Quite a piece of turf we are standing on here. The um, second 14 and second 16, when they were cut off, there were vicious battles down there, but then they left the Japanese. They suited round over the top of the hill and that actually the engineers actually recut a path through the jungle below us back to Minari. So where we stopped and um, had a bit of a morning break down there, the, uh, that was originally the laid post. So a lot of uh, supplies were down there, ammunition, food supplies, wounded, um, treatment stations, etc. all down there. The boys that got through to that point got as much Tucker as they could possibly carry, spoiled what they couldn't carry, and took off. Because the Japs went down the hill, got to that clearing where we could actually see down a Minari before, set up their mortars and heavy machine guns, and were starting to plant that uh, regimental aid post. The 22nd 20, 22nd, which was uh, holding the front line against the Japanese, when they were cut off, they had to skirt all the way around the hill, and how they got back to the um, behind Australian lines is an unbelievable journey. Or arise of the sons of his men, let us sing of our joys to be free. Praising God and rejoice need to be Papua New Guinea. 
shot again from the land that you see. Papua New Guinea, let us raise the voices and proclaim. Papua New Guinea, now we thanks to the good Lord above for his kindness that we so may love. For in fear of our fathers so free, Papua New Guinea. Shout again from the whole world to hear, Papua New Guinea. We are independent, we are free, Papua New Guinea. And down here we're going to find a bit of ammunition stump and uh, we're also going to find hopefully a bomber be fantastic, or a shell anyway um, sort of an extra hour and a half off the track come and check this out but it, uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty cool so we'll see what happens see that slip here we are, day five in like a mystic forest still heading down to the munitions dump and hopefully the bomber look how old these trees are it's just spectacular These giant bandanas. I had to pay 10 kina in order to come see this uh, mortar dump. Check this out. These keys all stand to learn. We move along the track with weapons gripping and ready hands, or ready for the track. That the lurking foe might choose to make would make us quite surprised. Not a palm from a sway or a falling leaf escapes their watchful eyes. Not a word is spoken as we file along broken into the jungle's gloom. Heavy the humid, sultry air with a sense of unheeding doom. No sunlight streams through the forest aisles that can
strangle the lush green hell where the struggling vines assume the trees in confusion we know so well. Tense to the impact of a shot from a hidden sniper's lair, ready for the deadly booby trap to make the innocent unaware. Scanning the tops of nearby trees, ready to clear the track, and reply with chattering Owen guns to the sniping rifle crack. The soft deep mould, the clinging mud, the stench of rotting leaves, the reek of dress, death of silent storm. The foe behind them we leave, unburied there beside the track, their conquering days are over. They'll never know their land of cherry trees, their island dead no more. Here we are guys, day five, just coming to camp. It's a great water day today. We're about to jump in the creek and have a bit of a clean. Got the gear down there. Look at that. There's Tom scooting across the, uh, the tree like a monkey. He's well adapted by now, isn't he? So yeah, I hear the water's cold, but I'm uh, definitely looking forward to it. So uh, day six tomorrow and uh, starting to look at heading home. Been fantastic though. Perfect weather. I gotta show you how we do it. This water is absolutely freezing cold. Like, you wouldn't believe it. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I haven't got the courage to go right under. <sighs> oh, you're freezing cold. Oh, you're Oh. Oh. Get that skull. Oh. Don't know why I'm filming this, but. Oh, man. No hot showers here. <laughs> Beautiful water, but now you do the soap. <laughs> Check this out. Not a bad bathroom. Once the wind blows, it's nice and warm. Alright, now for the soap. See you later. Got to wash parts of it. Uh, don't want you to see. Bye. Here you go guys, uh, day six today, we're actually up at uh, camp 1900, which is 1900 metres, and it is cold. Six degrees this morning, I think. Six or ten, I'm not sure. Max chilled out something. Anyway, we're all rather nippy up here, and it's uh, not very tropical at all. Um, just been down to the creek there where I had a swim yesterday, and was looking for some gold, but no, no luck at all. Um, so yeah, I think we've got a, an up, down, up, down, up, down kind of day, but this is our second to last major day, and uh, yeah, tomorrow it's the descent down to probably a couple of hours before we get to Kokoda, so we've got uh, camp tonight, another camp tomorrow, and then into Kokoda, so uh, yeah, should be good. Not sure what we'll get, but uh, it's been fantastic anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, fun!
Hey, against the balance. Yeah. All right, get some balance. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out, day six. It's day six, isn't it, Max? Yeah. Max says to the side, loves cameras, and I don't know he does. I just did a heap of recording, but it just was foggy, so I just hand hold it for a bit. We're heading down the Dakota Gap now through the valley. While his brother Butch, um, lieutenant in charge of a platoon, that was taking the frontal attack from the Japanese on the high ground um, down the road from us, uh, he was uh, handing out ammunition, ammunition to his boys in front of him when he copped a few rounds of machine gun fire through the guts. He um, survived that. He was carried back here by his boys. Uh, he was held in extremely high regard by his platoon and left on the side of the track nearby where we are at the moment. His uh, brother was notified and came over and spent the last uh, few hours with his brother. Dan used to be a, a great singer, apparently, and Butch asked him to sing some songs. So he actually, the songs he sang was uh, Danny Boy here and obviously very moving and he passed away on his 32nd birthday um, on this track here. Now my first trek in, um, and my first training trek, uh, we had a big group, there's some SAS guys and their wives and what have you, and we had a, a big bloke, the one who fell on the Brown River <laughs> at the same time. Terrific singer uh, and he sang Danny Boy while we are here and boy the hill was awash with tears. It was very moving, he was a terrific singer. Bit of an honour this trick actually, because uh, 68 years ago our uh, Aussie diggers came through here to set up their first uh, first defence against the uh, the Japanese. So we really are walking in the footsteps um, to this very time, 68 years ago. It's amazing. Alright, you want to see a climb? Check this out. Here we go. That's on the grid line right opposite us as we sit here. Now, paint a picture of the battle scene. Australian troops have come forward. They've encountered the Japanese right from uh, where we camped last night, just in pockets of uh, isolated dying Japanese until they hit um, Templeton 1 where they were in more of a concentrated um, form scattered through here and really caused a lot of grief from the Australians. It took them a week for the Australians to actually push through from Templeton 1 to, to um, Eora here. That took about eight, eight or nine days uh, with about 70 odd lots of life, 77 uh, diggers died in that area. When they got to this point, 
the Japanese had well entrenched themselves. They had their mountain guns through here and a lot of firepower and they'd actually even had reinforcements come forward. Okay, so they've been actually shipped forward into New Guinea and come down to reinforce the, um, the longer serving servicemen here. The Australians tried to come down the track that we come down and they were cannon fodder. The Japanese just ripped into them. They couldn't cross the, the, the river. Any time they tried to cross, they were getting taken out. Apparently, Bill was saying the Japanese had a uh, mountain gun just above the water level and was basically firing point blank into the Australian position. And another mountain gun up on the ridge line there. The, um, the only way that the Australians tried to take them out they actually sent a company of men across, and they had to go across at night. If there's any hint of moon, obviously they'd be snipered off. And they got across to the bank opposite us. There they couldn't go any further. They were stuck. Any time they, time they tried to move, they would be taken out. Any time they tried to hop out of their, their, um, their ground scraping to have a poo or whatever, they were being taken out. So they couldn't move. That was what the true sense of the word of being pinned down is. <coughs> to get any wounded out, they would have they selected the um, fittest and finest out of the the three battalions that were wedged up along the ridge line where we walked today. So um, the two thousand men were all along that ridge line where we walked today on either face. They selected the, the finest to act as um, stretcher bearers to get the wounded out. So they'd get across at night and try and carry the wounded back across and of course they were being sniped so they were losing their finest men as well by doing that but there were a few that got back and um, managed to save some of the wounded so we're having a pit stop so I'll leave you here we've got a lot more climbing ahead yet famous battle site. Up there is the uh, lost battlefield that's been found. Up there in that forest. Pretty inaccessible right now. Look at these guys over here. Freezing cold water, having a bath. <laughs> Fantastic. What a spectacular place. A lot of history though.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, obviously we're still at your Creek, day six. I'm going to uh, cross the bridge. So the Japanese gun positions firing down on the Australian troops to Inora Creek. Australian helmets is a quite a bit thinner material than the Japanese helmet. This looks like a couple of uh, Japanese bunkers. Recording. Hi Ash. <laughs> All right. Get in here. Look at some more artillery. So after um, about a week, they finally sent only with two companies of men up through the saddle. They got them around the corner away from Japanese fire, up through a saddle, straight up the top. Now, so a company of men, approximately 100, so about 200 men were sent up through the saddle, along the ridge line, and encountered the Japs right on top of this uh, ridge, right behind us here. Just through sheer force, and the Japanese weren't expecting them, and they flushed them out of the position. Obviously it was on for young and old, it would be very close quarters fighting in that sort of jungle warfare up there. And flushed the Japs out of there, back through that ridge we'll go to, through tomorrow, that's firm, and flushed the Japanese actually back beyond Dakota from that point. 
so up on that ridge behind us um, is a huge arsenal of uh, weaponry, helmets, bones apparently all up in that area. Oh. Hi. Hello. 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 Morning. Hello. Ooh, a little bit of a bond. Here we are. So I just an extract I want to share with you that I read as a teenager and which has ultimately led me to Dakota. When an old man dies, a library burns, that's what they always said. I never knew quite what it meant until I heard that Tess was dead. I never got to know you see about his life and past. He took that with him when he went, because I never thought to ask. The shame is that these blokes like Ted are all around the nation, reading books and taking time to store this information, so they can pass along to us some knowledge of their past. And we can have it all for free, if we only thought to ask. That's the fault, because I made a promise to him. And just to finish on, this is from, um, a great uncle that was killed um, in action at age 19. And this is in his diary. When the golden sun is setting and your mind is free from care, when of others you are thinking, will you sometimes think of me? And that's what we're all going to do. Thank you. Oh, hang ahead, sir. They shall not grow old, as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not wear enough nor do the years condemn. If you're going down on the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Let's be together. Hey guys, here we are. We just left uh, Isu Rava. Um, pretty powerful uh, memorial to the diggers the Japanese on, on the Kokoda track. Um, yeah, it's been a good day. We've got about four hours ahead of us, as you can see. And it's a steady up down kind of walk. Get into camp at 4.35 and then tomorrow two and a half odd hours into Kokoda. So, yeah, it's just been hard, but fantastic.
one of the many fantastic creek and river crossings, just beautiful. So we're up at Isar Isarava there. You see by the photos that uh, we just had a war memorial service on Moran's Lake as well. And uh, yeah, some absolute heroes, Aussie diggers that I just never knew before. So I, I'm very grateful. Good morning, guys. I hope you're well. <laughs> All right, this is our last night. Um, last night here at Deniki, <coughs> top of the track. Unfortunately, you can't see it down there, but Dakota is just down there. We could see it last night when we came in. Um, we got about uh, a two and a half hour walk, um, and then uh, we may check out the museum if it's open down there. And then from there we can, uh, yep, catch a plane back home. So it's been a just an absolutely amazing trip. So I hope you've enjoyed it yourself. Made it, made it to Kokoda. Check this out, everyone's getting their photo done, souvenir photo. Small village, powerful history of war. Thanks for the trip. It's been fantastic. Hey guys, uh, this is the uh, Kokoda Memorial. Um, over there is the Japanese one. Then we have the native. Then we have the official Kokoda one. And we have another one there. It's uh, for Kingsbury. So over here we've also got the uh, Memorial Museum, which uh, apparently is never open. So can't take you through there. But it's fantastic to be here. You know, we've done the tracks about absolutely about 96 kilometres. But I think we've done about 100 if we do a few extra side trips, so 100 k's in uh, just over eight days, or around eight days, is a pretty good effort, really. So now we're going to walk on to the airfield and uh, catch a flight back to Port Moresby. And that's it, it's done. Pity we can't get in, eh? So here we are, Kokoda, we're coming to the airport now. Apparently, Willie tells me, we're up there. Is that a focus? 
in the mountains there. So here's our plane. <laughs> How long do you trade that for? Yeah. A couple of hours. A couple of hours. Two 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 hours. All right, well, we're at the airport. I don't know if these are people just uh, farewelling us or what's really going on, actually. And I'm not sure how long our plane's going to be either. Um, it be an hour, four hours. <laughs> just have to wait and see. So there's another uh, tricky thing here as well. So, yeah, it's pretty much the end, eh? It's been pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Okay. You will be. Hi. We've got lots of everyone here. Here we are at the. Uh, no. Here we are at the International uh, Kokoda Airport, and there's the system, I think. I think the high was just finishing each day, actually. <laughs> I don't think there's any lows. I think probably the pain going up the hills was, wasn't really a low. It was, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how you describe it. But I think all it is, just, to me, it was just finishing the day. At the end, at the end of the day, you know, finishing the trek and starting again the next day. I didn't think there was any real lows. <laughs> um, I think I like the river crossings. I thought that was really nice. I like that day. And doing it with one of the battalion, that was that was my high. The low bits is all sheep. It's gonna be a fun ride. Um, I'm not sure if there were weren't really any lows. It was just the mental game of getting yourself up or down, which we have. Um, my high, I think is, yeah, finishing each day and then going, achieving. We've actually, and looking back and looking at the map and seeing how far we'd come from day four, day five, whatever it was, and I just felt, I can't believe we've walked that far. So, yeah, it's been, yeah, all okay. Um, I really didn't have any lows. I enjoyed the entire time. Um, for me, the river crossings was the adventure. I just thought that was the best part because every time, you know, there was this bridge and, its architecture was always a challenge. Um, I think the two memorial services we had would have to be up there on one of my highs. I think it put in perspective why I came and and how hard other people before us have done it. So that was really good. And also just spending seven days with my dad. So, Is mean? that a high or a low? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a in between. <laughs> That's a high. That's a high. Ian? I can't tell you any loads. The uh, high is having a bushwalk where you have a shower or a bath to bend every day. There's nothing worse than when you go for a bushwalk and you end up being half damp and then having to climb into a wet sleeping bag in the rain, and that never happened. So uh, that was the high for me that the fact that every day ended up in nice weather and having a, a swim or a wash. Um, from a personal point of view, I've really enjoyed testing my body and the social physical challenge of enjoying, I guess, the feeling of feeling fit. Um, and also just understanding what went on in the 68 years ago because I was really ignorant and didn't have much idea. And particularly the selflessness of it, which I guess is at home a bit, yeah, the, at the motives of everyone who was out there at that time. And again, like Dougie, spending time with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a high or a low for you too? <laughs> 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 a high, definitely. <laughs>
look at the low point out of the way. I think it's down here. And um, <coughs> the knee pain is probably uh, the low point for me. Um, I would certainly be my wife reading the poem to her grandfather, and if you're over today, and spending seven very quality, um, or eight very quality nights days with her. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> 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 And also watching second platoon, battling, sometimes over an hour after camp, and um, still with a smile on their face, so I think it says a lot about those guys. So, okay. um, my low, I think the hardest day, I think, was like a war, and I just gave war, that was really tough mentally for me. And high would be the Easter Island Memorial today, just seeing it. Um, after looking at photographs, actually standing there and just looking at it, which is uh, for me, the high, um, as in company from you originally, uh, was uh, actually talking to the uh, Packers and um, and uh, getting to know them again, you know, just talking about familiar things and, and just uh, learning a little bit more about their culture uh, was certainly a high for me and uh, really enjoyable. Um, Lo was missing the track this morning. <laughs> 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 That was all good, I suppose, uh, sore feet, sore muscles, um, testing. I think we all sort of knew we were going to get that, or the suspect of your brain, yeah, if you didn't get it, well, lucky for you, I don't, but uh, getting a real appreciation of the terrain and, and some of the hardships that went on. You know, some more of it, uh, the highlights of them. And, uh, Memorial names up on, on monuments and that, and it doesn't really mean much to you that when you get up and come down and you can see that things haven't really changed in the last 70 years, or probably longer than that, but yeah, what they went through. Uh, for me, the high we're learning about Cody Trail, because I didn't do any reading before this. And uh, I thought it was a really, really good experience learning about everything that went on as, as we're going through. Um, I really enjoyed the cloud forest, the really high altitude forest, but I liked that. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with the lack of animals and birds. I would have liked to have seen more animals and birds. <laughs> they were gone. They got eaten. It was like the forest was yeah. just devoid of. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very strange. All, all old growth forests. Uh, yeah, but every forest was just there. It's all the dead snakes. Oh, no, okay. Mm -hmm. um, the highest for me would be the learning experience behind it because. I've, even though I'm still at school, I've never actually, I don't think I've ever been taught much about what actually happened here. Like, not at all, really. It's not taught much in school anymore, you know, unless you do an actual course about it. But, um, the low for me would be trying to eat them wheat bakes in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I get back, I'm never eating wheat. <laughs> 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 not a wheat bake kid anymore. Yeah, no, well said. Yeah, yeah for, for me, in fact, I, I really was convinced I didn't have a low, but those two wheat bakes on the first morning were <laughs> <laughs> the closest I got. But there has been, for me, so many highs. And I guess. The, the, the Kokoda, the wartime revisited, has to be top of the list. I know at both of the services I was sniffling, um, mm. and I wish I had my sunglasses both times, and I didn't. 